Do you have other topics? This is not really like high priority. No, I, I I just wanted to bring up that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's okay. just let's just gather if there's any other items that people wanted to talk about. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think we have a uh, long-standing uh, like all the issues. Uh, switch the uh, uh, C++ standard library to libc++. Um, so I think Matt, your uh, question is basically how uh, much libc++ is used, right? Yeah, I mean, just because again, my information might be way out of date, but I remember last time that I had looked into this, it didn't. It seemed like you know people were starting to move to Clang, but most people that were using Clang were still using the GCC standard library. So I just wasn't sure how much production usage libc++ yeah. actually. My, my understanding again, and also maybe out of date, is that on Mac OS, libc++ obviously is like the standard uh, library and that has a heavy use. But on Linux, it was much less mature. Right. Yeah, uh, well, I, I don't have much uh, data about this, probably, uh, uh, Harvey, you, you might have better uh, info, but like, uh, I think Chrome have switched to libc++ one and a half year ago-ish, something like, like last year, January-ish timing. And also I think the uh, Android used the libc++ for the Android NDK stuff. Um, about server side, I don't have really have much idea from there. Uh, I know some BSD, like OpenBSD probably use that by default-ish. That's so far I know. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it would make me feel a little more comfortable, like if we, if we knew that there was a little more server-side use. I, I guess my question is, is do we think that we're going to be changing things such that once we switch, we won't be able to switch back or, or, or like, will a user still be able to compile against GCC standard library? I think we will still keep the com uh, compile compatibility and for the official image, we might be able to do like gradual change. Like we publish two images uh, at the same time during some period. Yeah, one CI job that verifies that we maintain the C++. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. This is probably a, a, a good time to, there's a, there's an issue that I open, which I will link to. Um, but one of the things that I, that I do want to start thinking about is whether we want to have mul multiple images, multiple, you know, mm -hmm. like, so, so basically we'd have a, you know, kitchen sink image with every extension. And then we would have a, like a normal or a light version or something that has extensions that we feel that, you know, people would reasonably use. Um, there's just, there's been some concern that, uh, you know, particularly with providers that are trying to support you know, quote unquote stock envoy mm -hmm. that as the number of extensions gets larger and larger and larger, the, the code surface gets larger and larger and larger. Um, um, and yeah. and we, we have that exact same consideration and then we, we, we filter out extensions. I mean, you know, anyone who's a, I think anyone who's like reasonably sort of like competent and working with envoy should be able to build an image, right? Which like, I, mean, I think you're right, but but the problem here, and this is this is actually partly coming from Google, but partly coming from other providers, is for products like Traffic Director or AppMash or other situations, there is actually a desire to be able to bring a quote stock envoy, right? Like take yeah. take the public Docker image and just have it run. Um, and is, 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 that, is that our responsibility or is that the responsibility of someone like say Tetrate who's doing, you know, binary distribution? I don't, uh, to be clear, I don't, I don't have any answers here. Like this is yeah. a, this is an open discussion. Um, I, I was just suggesting that if we're starting to take the stance, which I think is reasonable for now that extensions are like drivers and we're going to allow drivers in from all kinds of different providers, some of which, you know, people won't care about. Do we continue to build and ship everything in our public sanction image? And it just, it, it occurred to me that if we're going to start doing multiple images, potentially for like a libc++ and like a GCC standard library, is this an opportunity to start thinking about multiple SKUs of, of public images? That's all. 
Okay, so my, my personal take, and this is, I'm not speaking for Google, I'm speaking for my, like, as an onboard maintainer is, um, you know, either I feel we're in the business of doing binary distributions and we should do a good job at that, and that involves, you know, building and qualifying and testing on multiple platforms, yep. reviews, yep. And all this kind of stuff. Or we, we should just, like, we should never actually even have <laughs> a Docker image at all with a binary in it and not make this the de facto and just yeah. say, here's the false distribution. It's a go speak to an onboard binary distributor who will do the supports and qualification for your platform. Um, so that, 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 that's one extreme position. I, I, I wonder what others think. I, I definitely hear you. I don't think that's going to fly. I mean, there's, there's already plenty of rage that, you know, we don't ship binaries in every possible thing. And I think this get envoy thing from Tetrate certainly helps. Um, we like, we don't, we don't, we don't need to harp on this. And again, I'm curious to hear what other folks think also, but um, it just seems like eventually we need to figure out what to do with our official images in terms of whether we continue to ship every possible extension. So here's a question. So like CNCF, they largely fund things which are, you know, very useful to making open source work uh, for the community and but aren't things that, you know, necessarily, you know, the core developers work on, like, for example, CI is an example. Would binary distributions fall in that category? Can they pay contractors or someone to actually do this for us and manage that part of our uh, well. I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. And I mean, that would probably be a conversation between at this point, Tetrate and CNCF because yeah. that's what get envoy basically is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Leeson? Uh, yeah, I think that a uh, reasonable like for multiple image at this point, but I, I think for this like uh, specific issue about libc++, I think we will do, um, we will have to do some kind of like dual image for a while uh, for that because it's breaking uh, the only, I think, the dynamic open tracing stuff. That's but for dynamic sure. Open tracing does a dynamic load of a, of a library compiled outside of our build system. Is that why that? Right, changed? right. That's what dynamic OT does. And I think yeah. because the ABI compatibility we have here, it yeah. for sure it breaks the existing users of that. Have you have you reached out to Ryan Burns offline? I see said that issue on uh, uh, no no issue other uh not contact him other than that. Okay. But like I I think the like the switching is not only the for the um open tracing issue we have a uh, multiple motivation to do that switch. Okay. Um, maybe just on that open tracing issue, do you want to just either ping me on Slack or send me an email and I can add Ryan Burns and we can just see if we can get that memory leak fixed. We should just do that either way. I see it on that issue. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm just saying he might not be checking GitHub, but we, okay. it might, might work better over email. Yeah, sure. But I think uh, Josh mentioned that the memory is more, libc++ is more memory efficient. Sorry. Josh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, was there something I needed to add? You're right. I have observed I, I think you, you were mentioning me that libc++ is more memory efficient in terms of the standard string implementation. Yeah, it just uh, uh, it inlines small strings into the um, base footprint of the object. So anything 22 characters or less does not require like any separate pointer allocation. It's very efficient. I thought that was a standard string optimization these days. The the standard lib doesn't do that. Lib did C plus plus. I don't think does that. But really interesting. Yeah, I don't think so. Lib C plus plus does. That's so. that's very surprising. I thought that was like a, a string optimization that everyone does now. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I mean, again, I don't I don't have any objection to the lib C plus plus change. I, I would just love to learn a little more about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know, what, what the production usage looks like. Well, we're using, I mean, this is the default in Google um, now, although I don't know how long that, I'm pretty sure that's true, and I don't know how long that's been the case. So you're using internally for all of your server software in Linux, you're using libc++? Yeah. Okay, well. I'm then. pretty sure. Yeah, I think it is. Um, there was announcements about it recently, and that 
you have the option when building a binary to back out, you know, opt out of that. But that I mean, if you're if you're using it everywhere internally, that's that's good enough for me. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like there's it's getting a fair amount of mileage. Okay. What's so I mean, if other people, I I I have no objection. So if other people have any thoughts, we can we can raise them. But that sounds fine to me. I you know I mean the part of this that I really like is that with this we now have you know, we have basically, as we track with a particular Clang version, we know exactly what software we're running on every, every distribution, which is quite nice. Yeah, but we, yeah, for the, right, I think that's uh, one of the major motivation for this as well. Okay. Cool. Um, does anyone have any more stuff on that? Any, anything that makes everything go smoother and makes memory smaller is good for me. Yeah. Okay. I was going to briefly talk about the, the regex issue since it was already open publicly and there's some things that I, that I wanted to chat about. Um, any, any objection to talking about that? No. Uh, Let's talk. Talk about it. Um, so for people out there, there's an issue open. I can link the issue into the dock where uh, some fairly simplistic regex ca causes Envoy to oom um with large input. And it basically has to do with the fact that the standard C++ regex implementation, it has some kind of recursive memory hogging implementation. Um, so this kicked off a long discussion internally uh, within the maintainers and the security team as to whether you know this should, we should count this as a CVE and do it in private. And since the issue was already open, and there's already warnings in the docs about regexes being very risky. We decided to do uh, basically a, like a public security issue. Um, so what I am working on right now is uh, I'm basically going through particularly the routing API and looking at everywhere that we use regex. And I'm introducing uh, like a, a new regex message structure um, that'll be a little more flexible and have more controls and be more clear in terms of what dialect it's using. And then I'm looking at the Google V2 library, which is designed for untrusted input. And at least as the documentation says, is supposed to execute in linear time and uh, safe, safe amounts of memory, uh, no matter what the input string length is. So anyway, so I've been looking at that and I've been looking at introducing some new abstractions into Envoy to hide the actual regex engine and implementation for most of the code so that if later we decide to do something different than redo, we can, we, we can swap it out. Um, the one thing that I was looking at, which I was IMing Josh about, is that I was trying to see if I could replace most of the uses of standard regex with re2. And um, I think this has already been brought up, but there, the, the, the Re2 API is a lot simpler than what standard regex supplies. And there are some pretty complicated use cases in, in like the stats tag extraction code that I don't think Re2 is, is probably ever going to be able to do. Um, so my current assessment is that we're probably never going to be able to get rid of standard regex, at least in certain parts of the code where we have trusted input and trusted regexes. Um, but I, I'll do what I can for the untrusted part. Um, so that's the that's the current situation. I'm working on that right now. Um, yeah. Does does that make sense to you, Josh? Yeah, that sounds good. Like I was saying, uh, and I had mentioned this on I am. I was working on this like well, I think well over a year ago. Uh, um, but I do remember that I had a goal of getting rid of regexes from that tag extraction code entirely. Yeah. And I had gotten about 95% of the way there, but the technique that I was using couldn't handle a couple of the forms. And so I would have to have like two strategies and it didn't seem, and it seemed like with a bunch of other hacks, I got like two second startup time on 10,000 clusters, which I thought was kind of good enough, so I just left. Yeah, 
So, so, so my question there is, can we get rid of it at least from the API for stats, like the bits that appear in Bootstrap and so on, where we specify the tag extraction, and just keep it for the internal uses? Yeah, yeah, that that might be the case. Um, I would rather do that as a follow-up, ju just because I don't know what people are doing there. And, and again, like if people are modeling their regexes off of the ones that are checked into the code, like yeah. I almost started crying last night. Like these regexes are, I, I mean, they're, they're like, you need like a PhD and like a fellowship in regex to understand these, <laughs> these regexes. Yeah, I, I don't understand them. Uh, well, we had some very smart people working on writing them. And that's what I uh, uh, but, but like, could we at least for stats, like just add that again, safe regex as an option there. And then we'll figure out how to deal with the actual turn down and deprecation, which is going to happen. Yeah, time. I think that's, I, I, I think that's totally reasonable. I think I would rather do that as a separate change just okay. because it's not really security critical okay. because all of the strings there are effectively trusted. Um, so, okay. although even that's not necessarily true just in the sense that, I mean, I suppose people could be generating stats that are somehow based on user input, but if they're doing that, that's insane. So- um, How are you generating like the classic? I, I, I've lost complete track of how you do the forward proxy behavior, but originally we're talking about dynamically generating clusters based. How are you na Are you still doing that? Are you naming them based on the inputs or? Uh, no, so that that's that's not there. There's no dynamic generation of clusters, so there's no there's no regex there. But I mean, in looking through the route API, there I mean, there's a non-trivial number of cases in, in which we allow regex and and they're all busted basically. So but but those I think it's it's straight it's it's, it's straightforward to fix all of them. It's just that we're gonna have to end up deprecating a bunch of fields. And I and I actually have another question for the group, which is because re2 will not support all of the regexes that standard regex dialect supports, I actually am questioning whether we should deprecate the old field or just have some kind of warning and stat that basically warns people that they're using an unsafe regex and then they can have a config to like turn off the warning or if we should fully deprecate it. I'm just concerned that basically like we're gonna deprecate functionality that someone is actually using somewhere and then with the re2 engine, they're not gonna be able to implement it. So uh, b before that, I have some like basic question about that. Since we don't do any exception catching on the regex matching pass, I thought the C++ standard regex would raise an exception when runtime some issue have on the complexity and the stack. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. would that would simple do, simply do that solve some of the case that we have the crashing today? I don't think so. No, it's an oom, not a. Yeah, I think I think. No, I, I, I think the standard regex have the error stack that. It there was enough, not enough memory to f perform a match or some error code like that. Since I we don't, we don't catch any exception there today. I see. The case that was failing though was, um, actually, I don't know how much we know and how much was conjecture. I think yeah. this was running out of stack space. Right. Yeah. There's, a, there's explicitly C++ standard uh, regex constant error code says error stack. You know, like, What's okay. memory to perform? What I can do today is I can take the case that was reported in the issue and I'll run it locally and just see see what actually happens. Mm -hmm. I don't think it changes the fact that we still want to offer yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. it's I much mean, safer. I mean, but if that can cut by exception, I I, I don't know if that's right. the case. We will be doing the catch anyway. Yeah. But but I, I guess what do people feel about should we like on the public API perspective, should we fully deprecate the config that effectively uses standard regex or should we still allow it, but, but warn or like have that be part of our linter? Like I could see both arguments. I mean, my gut tells me to deprecate and still someone like, you know, complains very loudly just because it's unsafe. Um, but I'm not sure if people have thoughts there. My, my opinion is deprecate the old one, but I have no idea what the community will say. Yeah. So I yeah. think we need more. I mean, well, 
given our given our current deprecation cycle, I think my plan, unless people strongly object, is I'm going to deprecate the old way, and we can wait and see if people complain. And then if they complain, we can figure out what to do. Like we're not removing anything, and basically from the V2 API, it'll be the V3 uh, for these yeah, things. Yeah, that's fine. Where it comes and. We don't hear any complaints in the time frame of the V2 API where after we've deprecated and feature flag turned down this yeah. and, and people you know, Well it's more it's more though that given all the work that Alyssa has done with, with the stats and the warnings and stuff like that, there are people now that are trying to run like deprecation warning clean. So, you know, if they start yeah. seeing a deprecation, they're probably gonna notice and then they're gonna possibly complain about it. So I, I think that's the case in which hopefully they would tell us if they absolutely cannot move to the re2 dialect. Yeah, that's the goal. And if they don't, they have had a bunch of rings right. of beetles to Yeah. Um yeah, the, the only I, the only concern I have again, if we if we do this, it'll be like the six month cycle where we have to build a release and wait and then build. Yeah, it. that's fine. I mean, I'm I'm doing the config in such a way where, just based on some of the names of the fields, it's not like the names that I would necessarily like. Like I have to use safe underscore regex, but that that's life. We can we can we can clean that up in V three. Is there a path where you um, when you see a regex in the in the API you attempt to compile it with RE2 and emit a warning if it if it won't accept it and then do the deprecation yeah. that way. So we would basically change the meaning of the, of the fields. Yeah, we've discussed yeah, this. Yeah. I think this is feasible. To, actually, at one point I thought, what I'd like to do is make a PR into Envoy that will look at each regex and decide on a regex by regex basis if it's compilable in RE2 and make the decision that way. But fortunately, I didn't go down that route. Um, I could I could take a look at that. I, I'm just, I'm also concerned just about like subtle subtle behavior differences. Um, sure, okay. And, and I feel like it's better to be explicit about what we're doing, um, but I could look at that. And also like, our, our, I mean, apparently what guarantees are we making to our, you know, our users? Are we saying, no matter what a regex you put in there, it's safe or, if you happen to write write one which might work in RE2, <laughs> then it'll probably be safe, but otherwise it won't be safe. Like I guess this I, I is, you get into like this like a very complex model for the safety of regular expressions. Whereas if you have a field which says safe, well, I mean it says safe, it must be safe, right? <laughs> yeah. That clarity. And also I think that it's um, it's not impossible to uh, like look at a regex and decide that it either is directly compilable in RE2 or you could convert it to but there probably is a class of regex patterns which would compile in both compilers and do something different. Right, and that's my and that's my big concern. And and the way that I'm looking at the messages right now, at least on the API config level, and, and we can obviously cover this during code review, is I'm actually trying to be pretty explicit and future proof about which engine we're using um, so that we don't wind up in this situation in the future so that you know people will basically know that they're using the re2 engine and then if you know magic regex engine foo comes in two years we can add that and, and not and not break people basically that's fair yeah um so as uh, like i think when i saw that as a side um idea for that is uh ex uh, for the route matching part, shall we do something uh, like this is like a little bit uh, um, separate from the regex issue. Shall we consider something as some of the UI templating based route match? Since what I have seen so far is that uh, people use the regex for that purpose for yeah. a lot of cases. Isn't that basically it's like effectively another regex syntax slash engine? Like in no, the UI. Uh, the UI templating is what you specify for the gRPC templating and what the, the format of the variable bindings in the open API spec that you do the, like the um, curly braces with variable oh, names. Well, yeah. I understand that it's not a regex syntax, but uh -huh. are we really saying we want to have essentially a pattern match um, option and you can plug in what you can specify through some enum whether it's re2 or pcre or 
a URL template, and then you you supply that pattern. I mean, it's it's something that that, that I think is worth thinking about. I think it has to be a different issue, so we should right, right. We should open I mean, I mean it's, a di it's a different yeah. issue, but like to I mean to reduce the radius mm -hmm. usage. That I agree. Is something we can do because that is yeah. a widely uh, deployed pattern already. We, well, we uh, open yeah. API stuff and gRPC uh, transcoding yeah. bindings. And you know the 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 thing that I like about that, and I've experienced this now at multiple quote web scale companies, mm -hmm. is you know as much as you try to push back on not having regex routes at the edge, they they creep in. But my experience is that they're typically a very 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 small dialect of regex, and it's possible that we could do something simpler that would cover almost every case. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. That's. Uh, do you want to? You want to open an an issue on that? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Um, I guess yeah. So I'll I'll just keep going on that PR, and uh, I'm I'm mostly out Thursday and Friday. I'll, I'll see if I can get an initial version out by tomorrow with all the mm -hmm. other code reviews stuff that's happening. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but I'll I'll try. Okay. I I want to add um, two more quick points that we uh, going to just interject. One is that we discussed, actually we discussed this internally yesterday. Um, uh, we like the RE2 option as the mainline thing that we think most people should do, but uh, it's worth pointing out that PCRE mostly officially accepts the same, same language as stood regex and is probably better. I don't know a ton about it. Um, so it's an interesting thing to possibly, it should be on the table yeah. this is an option for the future. The other one is that um, a user uh, can inject new stats into Envoy via a request header oh. or a response header. I forget which one. There's yeah. There should be codes that say. Right. But those, those, those cases all have to be turned on like for, for security reasons. Like none of those cases are on by default. And, and, and if that's the case, then we need to fix that. Okay. Let's, we'll talk offline about yeah. that. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm fairly positive that all of those cases should be edge, should be edge sanitized. If you know of a case that's not, we, we should talk. Um, I might not be seeing all of it, but we can, we can chat later. Okay. Um, real quick, in the one minute that we have, um, the, there's the KubeCon um, uh, intro and deep dive. I sent an email about this for maintainers. I've gotten a couple emails back from um snow and stefan um we, you know obviously everyone that's there can come it's mostly that we get you know four free maintainer tickets basically so you know if people want a free kubecon ticket you know and you happen to be there just let me know and we can figure out who, who gets them versus who might be getting a ticket for some other reason basically um so you don't have to answer that now but i don't know what people's plans are in terms of coming to envoy con or kubecon yeah, I haven't figured that out because of the GCP Next in London that week. I don't know whether I will go to that or not. Yep. Okay. Um, I am getting kicked out of this room. I got to drop off. So, See you. See you. I talk to you later. Bye. See you.